Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I'm going to show you guys how to root your Kindle Fire. If you don't know what rooting is, it basically gives you super user access, and you can then install third-party applications that you wouldn't be able to install and fully customize your device. So just a quick example, I have a regular Android interface here that I can bring up. It looks like a typical Android device, as you can see. I also have access to the Android Marketplace, and I can download and install regular Android applications, and they work just fine. So that's just one quick example of what you can do with a rooted Kindle Fire. Now I'm going to show you how to actually do it. You will need a Windows-based machine. If you don't have one, then you can install it inside of a virtual machine. I've tried the Mac method. It does not work correctly because it doesn't recognize the Kindle properly. So once you have a Windows machine, you can continue. And what you need to do is tap up here in the right-hand corner and then go to More once here go to device now i'm going to put it up here because it has my serial number and you will need to allow the installation of applications from unknown sources so if it's off just make sure you turn it on because again we are rooting it it's from an unknown source so you need to have that enabled before you can actually root it and once you've gotten that out of the way, you can come back over here to your Windows computer and you will need to download the actual SDK for Android. And you'll also need to download Super One Click and I will have links to those down below in the post that I have in the more info. Uh, just go to that post and you will be able to download those files and you can open up the SDK installer. Just hit yes when it prompts you hit next and then right here it will automatically check to see if you have Java SE development kit installed. If you do not have it installed, you do need to have it installed prior to the installation of the Android SDK tools. So you can just hit the button that it gives you right here to actually bring up an internet window and you can download it from there and then install it and once it is installed you exit out of the android sdk tool setup and you just open it back up again allow and then you can continue and it will check to see if you have it installed and obviously because you just installed it you can continue and hit next and i highly recommend right here changing the destination folder to c colon backslash android with a capital a that will make things easier because you don't have to type as much. So just hit next. It's saying it already exists because I already have it installed, so that's okay. Uh, and then you just want to install it. Once it is installed, you can bring up the Android SDK. It should automatically ask you if you want to bring it up. If not, you can search for SDK in the start menu and you can bring it up that way. Now, every single time you open it, it will just check and it will download the packages or actually just load the packages. We need to download the ones we want. So make sure you uncheck Android 4.0 because the Kindle Fire is in an Android 4.0 device. It is a 2.33 gingerbread based device. So just select Android 2.3.3 and then hit install six packages. And then once you hit that, make sure you click accept all, and then you can hit install. Now I already have the packages installed, so I don't have to do that. And once you have them installed, you can continue. You might get something saying that ADB needs to restart. If you do just hit yes, and you can continue with this tutorial. And then you need to scroll down and select Google USB driver package. Now that does need to be installed. And once you have all of those things installed, you can exit out of the Android SDK manager. I'm just gonna hit okay to exit out of that. And then what you have to do is browse to the folder where you installed the Android SDK. And mine again is just C colon backslash and Android, and that's just on your C drive, Android, and then it's right here. What you have to do from here is go to Extras, Google, USB driver, and then right here where it says Android underscore Win USB, you need to right click that and then go open with Notepad. It should be the only option there. And once you have it brought up, you need to copy a certain code Again, that is in the post that's down below in the more info. And you need to find this line of text right here. Let me get this window in view. You need to find this line of text. It's google dot 
NTX86 and it won't look like uh, mine right here. It will look like this. What you need to do is put your cursor after that text that I told you about and then hit return and paste in the code that is needed. Also, you'll have to do that for this one right here. It's google.ntamd64. So it's just the same thing. What you wanna do is just hit return right after it and then paste it in. And you can hit file and then save. Once it's saved, you can exit out of that. And we will have to actually do something else. We're gonna have to enable hidden files so we can actually see them. And to do that, just go to your path bar right here, delete whatever's in there, and then type in the percent sign, user profile percent sign, user profiles, all caps, by the way, and then hit return. That will just take you to the basic part of your user profile here. And you can hit organize and then go to folder and search options view. And then right here, you need to check off show hidden files, folders, and drives. It should be don't show by default. You need to make it show hit apply and then hit okay. And then you should see dot Android right here. If you don't see that or you navigate it away from this folder, you need to type in the same thing, the percent sign user profile, all caps, and then the percent sign hit return. And then you will be at your user profile and you can go to that dot Android uh, folder right here. And then you need to take this folder right or this application or actually it's just a configurable setting, sorry, uh, and right click on it and then go open with notepad. And then whatever is here, you need to delete it. So mine basically just talks about third party USB vendor ID list. And again, delete it because we need to add our own uh, vendor ID and you just paste it in there and it's down below on that post that is in the more info and then hit file save. So once you have that updated, you can actually close out of it and you can plug in your Kindle. So I have my Kindle right here. You need to plug it in via micro USB. If you don't have one, you can pick one up. I, I'm just using the one that came with my HP touchpad. Once it's plugged in, uh, you will be able to continue. Now mine's just asking you what I wanna connect it to because it's a virtual machine. So I'm gonna select Windows. Once it's connected, you need to close out of everything and search for uh, device manager inside of the start menu. Once you have device manager opened up here, you will see it under other. Now mine isn't under other because I already have updated the drivers, but let's just pretend it is. Mine's actually up here. You need to right click on it and then go update driver software. And then you have to go to browse my computer for driver software and then hit browse to find the file path. And again, you're going to go to your computer C drive, scroll down here, go to Android, and then inside of Android, what you need to do is go to extras. So scroll down, extras, and then Google, and then hit okay. And then let's hit next, and it will browse for it. Now I already have it installed, but it should say that it can't verify the publisher, and you just hit install anyway, and you will get something that looks similar to this. It will say Android composite ADB interface. So you can hit close, and then you will see your Android device right here under the Android phone tab. Even though it's not a phone, it doesn't really matter. If it's there, you will be able to use it and you will be able to root it. So now that we have that out of the way, that is the absolute hardest part. What you have to do now is open up command prompt. If you don't know what command prompt is, it's super easy to open it. You just go to the start menu and then type in CMD and then open command prompt. And we will need to type in the following code, CD space backslash and then hit return. Now this basically is just targeting your C drive and then do CD space capital A and then N-D-R-O-I 
D for Android, and that could change depending on where you selected the install destination for the Android SDK tools. But again, because I told you guys that you should have it at Android, I'm assuming that that's what you did. And then you hit next to select the Android folder. And then you're going to do CD space platform and then dash tools. Now it's selected that tools folder and then you're going to do ADB space kill and then dash server. And then it will uh, go through and it will kill the server processes. And then you need to type in ADB space devices and it actually shouldn't look that long, but uh, for some reason it did for me. It should just say list of devices attached and it should just give you a number and then it should say space device. So I don't know why it actually did that for me, but it shouldn't do that for you. And uh, once you've done that, you can close out of command prompt. We're done. We basically have the uh, Kindle Fire mounted correctly. And then from there, like I said, you will have to download super one click version two, and you can do that again because I have a link to the download down below. And then once you are here, you can hit super one click and then hit yes. And then simply select root and it will actually go through and root it. Now I'm not going to wait for this because it does take some time. I, it actually says that my device already appears to be rooted. So I'm going to click yes. Actually, I'm going to click no because I don't want it to overwrite anything. But you are just going to click yes to whatever it asks you. It doesn't matter. It should only be like two different windows and uh, just click yes to it. And then you will have a rooted uh, you will have a rooted Kindle Fire and you can gain uh, super user access and you can basically install anything that you want. And I will do tutorials for you guys and show you how to get your device like mine where you can access the actual Android market here. So I hope you guys liked this video just showing you how you can actually root your Kindle Fire. And again, I have the full written instructions down below on the post. So make sure you go to that post. It has everything written out and it's extremely detailed and it is definitely a necessity because you will not know what to type in otherwise. I hope you guys liked this video. Remember to rate it up if you did. And if you guys want to enter the All Things Apple giveaway, rate it up, like I said, and also favorite it and leave a comment down below in the comment section with the phrase, all things Apple giveaway, and you will be entered for a chance to win either a brand new unlocked iPhone 4S, an iPod Touch, an iPod Nano, or an iPod Shuffle. But first you must meet the prerequisites. So I will have a link to the video describing the all things Apple giveaway and you can get all the information there. So like I said, I hope you guys like this video and I'm looking forward to making more videos on the Kindle Fire. And until then, just stay tuned. This is ICU signing out.